everybody. I probably should have waited until my yawn was done for starting the stream, huh? Whatever. Hi, everybody. Hope you're having a good day. Just so you know, my cats are being extra squirrely today. Uh, hey, Ross. Um, so they were just in here wrestling. Um, now they seem to have dashed across the house back to the front room. But if you hear a loud noise... Or they come running back in here. It's just them. Just just having a day. Living life. Cats. Anyway, I hope you're having a good day, Ross. Good morning. I think. Uh so we're gonna do the next little grammar lesson and then a few of the vocab sentences, so this should be exciting, um, because there's a lot of important things here <laughs> with the verb and the relative pronoun and alos. Those are all super important, so that's good here. What about you? Pretty good. Can't complain. Yeah. Dealing with cats. Basically it. Oh, there they are again. Let me let me see if I can find them on camera for you. Uh, 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 I don't know if I can get it through. Yeah, there they are. He just went running. Where'd he go to? He's there. Yes. Pretending not to care. That will change soon, I'm sure. That guy is super ready to go. What are you gonna do, Spock? What are you gonna do? That's what I thought. Alright. Oh! 40 months! Thanks for the sub, as always! Always appreciated, my friend. Alright, so now that you've seen a little cat break, uh, let's talk about verbs. Uh, so they're giving us bino, which is a funny word to start with. Um, for reasons that this book probably won't get into. Just the type of verb that it is. Um, there are, you might remember from Latin, there's just a couple different groups of verbs. And they do slightly different things. Well, I mean, the verbs don't do different things, but they they just ha are formed slightly differently. Greek has some of that going on, too. Um, in the present tense, the ending are the same. Are the same? The endings are the same. Um, well, that's also not true. Because I guess there's kind of three types of verbs. And it's like type 1, type 1A and 1B, and then type 2. So this is like a 1B situation, I know. But not really important to you. We just need to know how to form the different endings. Binary. Almost. Very close. Uh, so, bino, I go. Binace, you singular go. Bine, he goes. Binomen, we go. Binete, ye go. I don't. Ye go? Is that how ye was originally used? I'm legitimately confused now. <laughs> anyway, it's we wouldn't say this today. <laughs> Whatever the case may be. Um, God rest ye merry gentlemen. Yeah, I guess. Ye. Was used as a plural you. Yeah. 
I never thought about it. I just sang the Christmas carol. <laughs> but we would probably just say you. Plur. And then by Nusi they go. So O Ace A Omen Ate Usi. It just rolls right off the tongue. Um That's how it looks for again. Most verbs are in group one A or one B. Um so those are the endings that the group one verbs have. Uh, you will see in the note here, um, so fuego, do's, do's all those things, uh, lego, ferro, uh, but pollo, filo, filo, miso, have that circumflex over the omega, uh, as well as umen and ate, all, all with the circumflex there. Um, and you might be saying, okay, so what? We haven't been paying attention to any accent marks, which is true. We have not. But <laughs> the reason that these verbs have the accent mark, like, back on the stem, and these ones have the circumflex over the ending, is because these guys uh, are a contraction. There's actually an, I think in these it's all an epsilon, so a small e. Uh, poyeo, phileo, miseo. Um, but the epsilon and the omega contract, and so then we get the, the circumflex omega. I don't know if we're going to learn all the rules for contraction uh, over the course of this book. Uh, but just just so you know, that's why we're getting that uh, circumflex there. Because normally with verbs, the accent mark goes back as far as possible. Um, whereas with nouns, the accent mark like has a set home and only moves later in the word uh, if it has to. And you might say, well, what, what does that mean? In Greek, the accent is always in the last three syllables. And so if you get a really long ending on a word, the accent mark is going to get shoved to the right. Because that's just how Greeks pronounce their words. Take it up with them. When Omega cools down, it contracts. Exactly. That's that's what like vowels hanging out with other vowels. They they're cool and they contract because you're cool when you hang out with things. Right. <laughs> you're very generous, Rose. All right. The imperfect of verbs that begin with a consonant. Is got is got by pudding. That this book is written like I talk. I'm impressed. Uh, is got by putting an epsilon before the stem and an omicron nu after it. This tense denotes a continued or repeated past action. It is thus conjugated. A by non, I was going. A by nace. You were going. A by ne. He was going. A by nomen. We were going. A by nete. Ye were going. A by non. They were going. <laughs> Words are hard. Um, so again, uh, that epsilon in the front. This epsilon, actually, we'll see it in every past tense. It's a past tense marker for Greek verbs. So they throw that on to let you know that you're no longer in the present. It's a very helpful clue. Hey, Stephen, good morning. How are you doing? Uh, and then otherwise, just some endings. You'll notice similarities. Uh, that sigma in the first person singular. Omen and ete are actually the same. Uh, 
so, you know, they, they, they throw you out some clues, make it a little bit easier. Um, you'll notice the context issue that I was going and they were going um, are the same in the imperfect. So be clear if you're talking about yourself or a group of other people. Usually it's not too hard <laughs> to figure out. And usually it's third person plural. <laughs> but anyway. A lot of the th a lot of things become the same when they're imperfect. <laughs> That's true. Ooh, your morning hot chocolate. That sounds pretty good. Granted it is evening here. Well, late afternoon here. Um Maybe I'll have a post-dinner hot chocolate. That could be pretty good. Although I've been like in a in a more of an ice cream kind of mood, which I still get chocolate in that, you know, with hot fudge and everything. Uh, but it is different. It is there is always a good reason for for a hot chocolate break. You're not wrong. Um, and I, and actually, when I was in Italy, I d I did the same as you, Stephen. Um, because I don't drink coffee, and especially in Italy, it's like I, I'm trying to think of a phrase that expresses the intensity of the coffee in Italy. It's very intense. <laughs> but yeah, so when I would go out to to a breakfast, um generally on the weekends we do like a Saturday morning, um, some of my friends. And I would get the chocolato caldo. And they would get espresso. Forte. Yeah, that, that, exactly. It's extremely forte. <laughs> uh, but the imperfects of pollo, pollo, pilo, and miso, and un es e umen ite u. Uh, so again, it's just the same issue that we saw above. Uh, there's a hidden epsilon between the stem and the ending, and so it's contracting with the normal ending and turning into this. There are kind of basic rules for when vowels hang out, what happens to them. Uh, because as you can see, they don't all do the same thing. You know nothing of coffee, but in your work, the word forte comes up a lot. Are you in music? Because that's what I always associate it with. <laughs> oh, ph pharmaceuticals. Uh, do not be confused with aqua fortis, strong water. Do not put that in your coffee. Is that like liquor? Forte with loud because music, yeah. Oh, there we go. Thanks for fixing that, Ross. I wonder why that didn't add. Did we forget a thing? No. We didn't forget a thing. Weird. Exactly. Fortissime. Most most strong. Most strongly. Ooh, nitric acid. That's a... Yeah. I would not recommend consuming that. Alright. Um, oh, and now we get an irregular verb, because that's what you really need right now, too. Uh, <laughs> I like how it's just like happy little sentences that sometimes don't make sense, and then here's a bunch of verb forms. <laughs> You're good, right? See, when people say this is my forte, I may enjoy hearing it as this is my loud. <laughs> I do like that. I never really thought about that. Because it's like... Well, like you said, like it, it means strength or strong. So this is the thing that I'm good at. But because 
in music, it essentially means play it loud. Yeah. Play loud. And yeah, it, it's straight from Latin, fortis forte. Um, it's just the adjective meaning strong. All right, Amy is irregular. So Amy is the verb to be, which is always irregular. Just, I don't, I mean, there's your challenge for the week. Is there a language where the verb to be is not irregular? Um, so Amy, I am, A, you are, Esti, he is, Esmond, we are, Este, y'all are, AC, they are. Then the imperfect ain, I was, Asta, you were, ain, he was, amen, we were, ate, ye were, uh, Isan, they were. <laughs> yeah, surprisingly, Italian uses a lot of Latin. I don't, I don't know why. Amy is the verb to be. Yeah, I mean, that is actually how it's pronounced. Um. Ain will probably be the bane of your existence, because it ends up looking like a few other verbs, but whatever, we're not going to worry about that at this present moment in time, unless they tell us to. Uh, the imperfect of echo is econ, with the same terminations as ebanon, sure, um... And again, the reason that it looks weird is just because there's already an epsilon here. So the epsilon plus the epsilon for the imperfect becomes A. It's really not that weird. Aim is definitely the bane of your existence in <laughs> Counter-Strike. Uh, oh, they even gave us a note about the uh, imperfect. Uh, epsilon. This epsilon is called the syllabic augment. Doesn't that sound cool? Uh, because it augments the length of the word by a syllable. I mean, yes, but I have honestly never heard that. Like, it's your past marker. What? Well, whatever. It's fine. It's syllabic augment, apparently. Because you just. The past indefinite or aorist tense denotes a concluded or momentary action. That's a super important tense in Greek. Uh, aorist aoristos means unlimited, indefinite, from horizo, I limit, from where which comes our word horizon. That's cool. Um, so the air is just like a simple past. Yeah, right, Roz? It's like, that's not... <laughs> like, it's neat, but it's also extremely not helpful or limiting at all. <laughs> like, any prefix or suffix would be a syllabic augment, right? But maybe, uh, no, no, because there is a reason for it. The reason for the epsilon syllabic augment is to denote that it's a past tense. Because it's a temporal marker. But, but it's also a syllabic augment. So, sound fancy saying that. Hey, the heiress of echo is escon, with the same terminations as the imperfect. Why are you telling me that? Do we need to know that for all verbs? I don't... I don't know. Because, um, the aorist tense, the simple past, again, I did this, came, I saw, I conquered, you know, whatever, all that. Um... This is where the 1A and the 1B separate. So, echo, for example, here, uh, is the one, I can't remember which one I'm going to use to distinguish B. Um, 
so we'll make the dis- we'll make the decision now that B will be the smaller group because that makes sense. Uh, so Echo is in one B. Bino is in one B. Uh, so the Eris and the Imperfect have the same endings. Um, the other verbs, most of the verbs, the ones in 1A, they have a different set of endings for the aorist tense. Um, and you might be saying, okay, well then how do I tell 1B apart in imperfect versus aorist? Um, it's because the, the endings don't change, but the stem does. So we have that sk instead of ech. You know, so it's echon in the imperfect and eskon in the aorist. So the, the root itself changes. Bino becomes be, uh, beta epsilon. And it actually, it changes even more. Because it just becomes a bane in the aorist because of contraction. Well, we're not going to talk about that in more detail because apparently they only want us to know about echo. So that's all we're going to focus on. <laughs> it becomes escon, and then, as it says, uh, esques, esque, esgomen, esquete, escon. All right. Uh, so the relative pronoun is hos, he, ho. Oh, and that's that's all the details we get about the relative pronoun. Okay, cool. Um, well, what you need to know is, aside from the nominative, um, just because there's some quirks with the nominative, the rest of the relative pronouns look just like the word the. Um, so ton, ten, ton, tu, uh, tes, tu, um, uh, but instead of a tau, the tau goes away and we get a rough breathing, which is why even the nominative it's hos, he, ha, uh, cause the neuter, the, would be ta, so you get rid of the tau, add the rough breathing, ha. Um, and that's how you form the relative pronoun. Um, you translate it with who, which, that. Um, and there'll be a verb somewhere in the relative clause. The person who does this is super great. Blah dee blah. That's a relative clause. Uh, other, the other, alos e o just an Omicron in the neuter. Both are declined like Kalos, except the neuter, which ends in all. Oh, okay, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. So let's see what they want us to do with these words. Now that we've learned them, amusements. Oh, this is fun. We'll get sports. Sports. So let's do our amusements lessons. Uh, theatron, the theater. Forget the word theater. It means the place where you look at things. Skene, the tent, scene, the stage, uh, in the theater. Um, well, it's actually the... Get into that. Unless they want me to get into it, but... That's where we get the word scene. Orchestra, the orchestra. Okay, now I have to get into it. Uh, because the way that, like, our theaters are kind of set up, there's, like, the orchestra pit, and then the stage, and then the curtains. Well, I guess the curtains are kind of in the front, too. But then there's also, like, a back drop. Sometimes. I guess sometimes there's not. There's just the right and left. But <laughs> let's just... 
say for the sake of our modern theater <laughs> that there's like the front curtains, but then also like some back area that's that's blocked off. Um, so the ancient theater, the or- orchestra was the dancing space. So it's what we would really kind of think of as the stage. Uh, and then the skene was behind that. Um, so it wasn't really necessarily used for much except as a way to get to the like you'd use it for you know props and and staging and stuff um but you wouldn't really do your acting on it all right, drama, drama, action, good. Uh, programma, hey, programma. You know all about programmas. So the scene wasn't used for much, just ex- <laughs> significant things like the plot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean setting the stage like decorations. <laughs> That kind of setting the stage. You are very programmer and programma. Uh, so something something written in front of something. A program. Tragoidia. Tragedy. Um, we don't really actually know where that word comes from, I think. Uh, maybe it has something to do with goats. Uh, you can read uh, one of the worst classics PhDs ever written about it. Um, which is everybody's favorite turncoat, um, The Birth of Tragedy by, um, that famous philosopher. (laughs) Set testing someone else's problem. (laughs) Uh, what is the name of that philosopher? You know, I looked into the void, and void looked back, and the Ubermensch, and Punch, where are you? Help me out. (laughs) The one that all the titles from the Zeno saga game came from. If you ask Ada Lovelace what the difference between a program and a script is, she'd probably say a script is what you give the actors and a program is what you give the audience. Uh, someone discussing how irrelevant it is to call one thing a programming language and another thing a scripting language. Huh. I didn't even know, like, there was a scripting language like i don't i'm not familiar with that hmm. but i guess it is like c script c plus script isn't it huh anyway comedia comedy okay cool uh Tragedies and comedies were performed in the... We'll just talk about from the Athens perspective, because it's easier. We know what happened in Athens. Most of our sources are Athenian. Um, So tragedies and comedies, you know, kind of the main two types of plays. There are also satyr plays. Satyr plays were performed in the same contest with the tragedies. Uh, Comedies had their own festivals. All right, enjoy your burb. PowerShell. Okay, yeah, I don't... I will need you to tell me what PowerShell is. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Uh, prologos, the forward, the prologue. Very important. Uh, pantomimos, the pantomime. I mean, I guess that's a type of performance, too. We don't really, you know, have scripts for that. 
for obvious reasons. Uh, kinema, movement, moving pictures. Uh, athletes, athlete, sure. Acrobatos, on. Climbing and walking aloft. Yeah, that's fair. Because you get bino in that second part, walking. And acro, the height. So, someone walking high. Uh, and then, edon es e omen ete on, I saw. Past tense. So, this is one of our um, eras. Power shell is a window shell or command line that's more powerful than CMD. Huh. I'm going to have to have Punch explain that to me. Because I'm still lost. <laughs> Uh, but I appreciate you thinking I know more stuff than I do. Oh, there was a cat involved. I understand. Unless you mean, you know, the Cheshire cat, which I also understand. Point is, there's no firm line between a scripting language and a programming language. Yeah, well, fair enough. A binomen, a store. Theatron o calon in. We were walking to the theater, which was lovely. En toy theatroi edomen skenein kai orchestron. In the theater, we saw the skene and the orchestra. The local cat name of Carbon. Cute. So Spock's actually not a, a tuxedo cat. He's he's all black. Um, he just sometimes has um. He's a nervous scratcher. So, like when we first got him, there was like a patch here, um, because he was all the time, and now he's got like a little. Light patch over here because he just keeps scratching the side of his neck, and you're like, Stop it! Stop hurting yourself! <laughs> Classic cat, sometimes. Yeah, and aggressive liquor, too. Like, to like the back of his legs. There's like a couple thin fur patches. That that is true too, um, and he does have like a few very random white hairs. Um, not enough for like a color pattern, um, or like a significant pattern, but it's kind of like oh, there's a white hair there, there. Maybe he'll be a good boy. He's he's starting, I think, to learn his name and to come when command. Spock, Spock! Oh, there's the other one. Oh, there's both of them! Veggies. Hey, come here, Spock. But you're obedient. You're obedient. Come here. Come here, Fudgy. Come here, Spook. Oh. This is my hand in the way, though. That's you. That's you. What are you doing? Hi. Hello. Well, thank you for the follow, and thank you for catching me live. That was my cat, Spock. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nice. Yeah, there's not too much Latin content. Uh, if there's a cool channel, let me know, though. I don't necessarily, like, I like watching video games on Twitch like a boring person, but I like offering Latin, so. Alright, now that I've shown off my cat, <sighs> it's very important. See, you're doing Greek right now, that's cool too. Yeah! Because um, last year we did Latin, I think, so this year we're doing some Greek. Poi anthropoi edon kala dramata kai tragoidias kai komoidias. Uh, and it's also been a long time since I've done Greek. 
so I'm a little rusty. Uh, Alright, so the men saw beautiful dramas and tragedies and comedies. Uh, so I translated that wrong. Let's do Kai Kai as both and. Um, because they're explaining what kinds of dramas they saw. <laughs> Another channel I found that does Latin content is called Nova Roma. Nova Roma. Cool. I will I will have to check them out. To programa leye tines andres kai gunaikes esen in toy dramati. So the program says which men and women are in the drama. In the play. A follow on Latin. Yeah, there is a lot of Latin content on YouTube. So that is good. Uh, to programa lege. Oh, no, I already read that one. To prologos lege tis estin efusis tu dramatos. Uh, so the prologue says who is, the, what is the nature of the play? There we go. <laughs> because tis is modifying fusis. So even though I want to say who, we're not talking about a person right now. Right. Oh, good job, Max. Aren't you smart? Takinem, which sounded sarcastic, but <laughs> it wasn't meant to be. It did not cross my mind, so. Takinemata ton pantomimon pola kai kalain. So the movements of the pant. Pantomimes, pantomimists. Yeah, okay, as a person. The the mimes were many and beautiful. You want to know the nature of the play? I am the nature of this play. I could see some plays starting that way. I could see Euripides doing that. Uh, in tu toi toi oikoi, asin alf. Athletai kai acrobatoi. Uh, in this house are athletes and acrobats. Talking about a house, but okay. In echenoi toi dramati edomen edomen heroas in oilois u. That's what someone dressed up as the tree would say. <laughs> that is also true. So then something Aristophanes would do. Alright. In that play, we saw heroes. And in others, no. Or in others, we didn't. That's probably a better way of translating it. Rather than just no. No. Hey, amusements part two. He's the guy who did the thing on frogs, right? Yes, indeed. Uh, he is the comedic playwright that we have the most stuff of. Um, I can't remember how many complete plays of Aristophanes we have, but quite a few seven, nine, something like that. And then after that, we have some plays of Menander. I'm not even 100% sure we have any complete plays of Menander. And Menander's several hundred years later. Really, really light on the comedy. Um, but yes, he did a Frogs. He did a Clouds. Is another really famous one. Lysistrata. Um, very famous. I just thought it'd be cool if the most recent common ancestor could be reconstructed. Your Indo European. Would it be cool to. It would be! Yeah, no, linguistics are a lot of fun. Um, like, I really enjoy studying, like, Linear B just for fun. And my. My close friend from undergrad, who went undergrad school, um, his focus was more on Indo European and. Um, linguistics. Just, it's just neat. You know? 
Uh, stadion, a place where athletic sports were held. Stadium. Hippodromia, a horse race course. Just cool. Hippodrome. Per, fire. Techne, art, skill, science. So there's the pyrotechnics, Roz. I think you mentioned those earlier. Uh, Techne is an extremely important word. Art, skill, science. Uh, gymnasion, gymnasium, gymnasticos, e on, devoted to athletics. Someone who is gymnastic, gymnastic-y. Trapeza, a table. Which becomes trapeze, but... Um, I want to say it's, like, related to words for, like, a tavern. Could be making that up. Kalos is the noun for beauty. So you can see the relationship between kalos and kalos, uh, meaning beautiful. Just the adjective only has one lambda. Asthenos, strength, um, related to like the word for chest, because upper body strength. Lura, liar. That's an important word. Pan all, hordama, sight. Oh yeah, from Hurama, Huramata. Yeah, that makes sense. Sight view. I don't know that that word comes up all that much, though, to be honest. I want to say they probably prefer words having to do with Theo. Which is just a different word to see, you know. Uh, philos, eon, loving, fond of something. Uh, can be a friend. We're already familiar with the verb phileo. Uh, ateles, tax-free. I was going to say without ending, but that'd be atelos. Would be slightly different, wouldn't it? Uh, but yeah, atelea? Atelea or taxes, I guess. So ateles, tax-free. That is not a word that I'm super familiar with, to be honest. I probably didn't read enough economic texts to really get into the concept of taxes and tax-free, duty-free shop. I mean, the Greeks had a word for everything, to be honest. The Greeks, Greek is a very dense vocabulary language. Um, and, you know, they had taxes. They had to pay for stuff, just like uh, modernity. You know, they... They divvied things out slightly differently, but when you're importing and exporting, you know, people want a share of that somehow. Be the geometric term trapezium, yes, I'm sure it is. I don't understand how a lover of tax free things became a philatelist, a stamp collector. Is that what that word means? I've never seen that. A stamp collector. Because the stamp makes the letter tax-free. Yeah. Like, I never... I never really thought... Although, I guess, like, back in the day... Not like modern stamps. But didn't the term stamp previously denote things that, like, had been paid... Their taxes had been paid on? But back in the day, I'm, I'm thinking of like 1700s, learning about the Stamp Act um, in U.S. history, which I think had something to do with taxation. <laughs> like everything in early American history, it had to do with taxation. <laughs> that's, that's what all of U.S. history is about, really. <laughs> To tax or not to tax. Um, but, yeah, the modern stamp used to post a letter. I guess I just always thought it was, like, just your way of paying the post office. But I guess... I guess the post office is a civic service and so they get paid from your taxes 
so uh, there I think there is some sort of convoluted connection. I just don't quite know it myself. And when you transfer a house tile, you pay stamp duty. Do you really? You know, we just bought a house. And so we got the title. Yeah, yeah the taxation was definitely a very thorny issue. Uh. <laughs> uh. Uh. Yeah. Fascinating. Anyway. Unrelated. Long discussion. But Punch. What's the name of the philosopher... Uh, that that the Zeno saga titles are taken from, like Derville Zermach, or Dermach, Dermach Zerville, whichever way it is. Uh, I cannot think of his name, and it's driving me crazy. Nietzsche. There we go. I just had to think through it for a while. Anyway, I referenced. His PhD in classics earlier. So. <laughs> but I couldn't think of his name. <laughs> if there are libertarians in it. You know. It's hard to say because it was just so easy. Like I guess just go live in the country. Just own your. Own your farm. You know it's. <laughs> It's a lot easier to just kind of do your own thing if you really wanted to. As our Thrustra spake. Uh, all right. All right. Okay. That was a long digression. But to the sentences. In toi stadioi estin hippodromia. So in the stadium is the hippodrome. In Thais or Kestrice, a san kalai luprai. I just read the row as a P. <laughs> Classic. Classic job. Lurai. I can read Greek. Uh, in the orchestras were beautiful lyres. Okay. Uh. Just be self-sufficient and do everything yourself. And then wait for Xerxes to show up. <laughs> Xerxes does kind of throw... He'd probably leave me alone. I mean, he's just attacking Thebes. Like, if you live ten miles down the road... <laughs> Not your problem. Uh, just kidding. Because they did have to, like, talk to other people and trade their goods. So, you know, they, they had to have a little bit of a thing, you know, social interaction. They didn't sign the arrival sheet. Yeah, that, does, that does sound about right. Sounds like something a musician would do. A hippodromia istin ateles... To theatron u. Uh, so the hippodrome is tax free. The theater is not. Right, so like if you have to go pay to see a show or not. I want to say they did offer stipends for the theater though. Because a lot, at least in Athens, again, Athenian perspective, because that's what our sources are. Um, you know, a lot of the price of the production was paid for by that year's rich person in charge of funding the theater. Um, 
so I don't know how much they had to recoup uh, because it was seen as your kind of payment to the, the state because you were rich. Ekenoi uh, hoi athletai en toi gymnasioi echon kalos kai stenos. Those athletes in the gymnasium ha were having, sorry, we're in the imperfect. Oh, we're not supposed to use this to mean have here, are we? Um. Oh, oh, never mind. We're having beauty and strength. Every time when we look at the theater sign and sheet, crew are exemplary, cast occasionally miss signing in, and orchestra always forget to. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> Although I wasn't giving cast enough credit either in that. In my head, if I had to guess, um, I, w I would not have known whether the cast or the orchestra would have been worse, generally speaking. Pantodrama kalos mega esche. All the drama has great beauty. Had great beauty, sorry. Past tense, we got the esche. Okay. O Georgos. George the farmer. Uh, Poie trapezan polytechne. George the farmer makes a... I've already forgotten how we're actually supposed to translate. Table. Okay. Table with much skill. Yep. Checks out. Then <laughs> you tell them the payment is based on signing in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to stadion tuto pan gugnastikon esti. This, this stadium is all gym, is entirely gymnastico, devoted to athletics. Okay. I, I'm guessing we should take pan with the first part, though, because it's not really an adverb. So this entire stadium is devoted to athletics. Pantes efiuron echtu teatru denon gar in bird. Musicians are mercenary folk. I guess, you know, that's in their past, right? The kind of troubadour kind of thing going around for money. Uh, Alright. They all fled from the theater for the fire was terrible. I'm guessing we're having some sort of emergency situation here. That escalated very quickly. Uh, I don't really know what caught on fire. I'm guessing the props, like the the pro scene, what hung in front of the scene that would depict, like, the house and stuff. I'm guessing that's what caught on fire. I don't, there's not really much else in the theater. It's stone. <sighs> A little less frightening. The pro scanium, yeah. I was thinking more of that in their past. You know, music lessons, paying for instruments, that sort of thing. Their immediate past, that is true. It's not cheap. Learning how to be a musician. I guess it can be. Um, but generally, people invest a not insignificant amount of money. Either through, as you say, the purchasing of instruments, um, or the the lessons themselves. All right, and that was our fun little romp through amusements. I miss it already. 
Oh, and next time will be fun. We'll talk about politics and government. Everybody's fa- politics and war, which will probably be the rest of the book. Uh, inventions and arts. Arts. Those will be some fun topics for next week. So thanks, everybody, for hanging out. I hope you have a lovely day. Um, let's see. As far as I know, nothing. Tuesday's a normal Tuesday. So Squish, thanks for hanging out. Uh, dropping by and everybody else. Always lovely to see you. Politics and war, what's the difference, really? Aggressiveness. I remember that from Star Wars. Uh, an epidemic counts as war. I wonder if they will have that. Ugh. Yep, yep, I'm, I'm about this time every week, so if you're free, you are always welcome, but if not, I do eventually remember to upload things to both Twitch and YouTube. So. <laughs> Man, being a Jedi would be cool. But that is neither here nor there. See you all next week. Oh, and as far as Fantasia is going, uh, I've been mostly recording it uh, without commentary and uploading it right to YouTube. Um, that's probably what I'll keep doing, but who, who knows? I might feel like popping in for a stream, maybe when I get to the end of the game. And then you guys can be like, wait, what just happened? Oh man, I read Darks and Droids. Yeah, I read at least the whole prequel part for it. It is. It is. One of my husband's friends got it for him, and then he gave it to me. Because he didn't need a new headset at the point. It's good, and I think my husband did end up getting the same thing uh, when he did eventually need to retire his old headset. So they're good, they're comfy. I got no no complaints with it. Once I figured out how to work the dial on it, that that took a little bit of doing. All right, uh, well, time for dinner here, and uh, take care, everybody.